Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. You know, spring might have been cancelled, but the snow is quite glorious to behold. I love snow scenes, me. I want to talk to you about the nature of shadows that fall onto snow. In particular, how they help to visually explain the three-dimensional properties of a scene. But also, how they might be improved and enhanced with a little warm winter light. Grab your crampons and I'll show you what I mean. First things first, I need to mix myself up a dark tone to paint a tree. After all, if I'm going to be painting some shadows, then I need something to be casting them. For this, I've used a rich, dark mix of French ultramarine and burnt umber. I'm not necessarily looking for anything too ambitious. A simple winter tree will suffice. My light will be coming from the left, so I need to make sure the darkest tone runs down the right hand side. So I'm softening the trunk off with a damp brush. My shadows will also consist of French ultramarine and burnt umber, but with a totally different consistency. This time I'm looking for a less intense mix, more of a blue grey. The same two colours then, but just look at the difference. Now watch what happens if I paint my shadows in straight. The message that they send out is that the ground is flat. Which would be fine if the ground is actually flat, then the message would be appropriate. But there are a couple of reasons why flat doesn't really work for me here. Firstly. If it's a landscape, then there's a good chance that the ground will undulate and follow random, interesting contours. The second reason is that this is a snow scene, and snow has contours and undulations of its own. It drifts and accumulates in interesting ways, so straight isn't what I'm looking for. A shadow tells us as much about the surface it's falling on as the object that is casting it. If we make our shadows look straight, then the message we're sending out is that the surface is flat. If the shadows appear curved, then the reason is because they are simply following the contours of the ground. Snow that has no shadows appears flat and two-dimensional. The minute we apply shadows to it, it starts to take on three-dimensional properties. The shadows actually contribute towards visually explaining those properties. Also, it's worth noting that we can introduce shadows from objects that we cannot see. Here, I'm casting shadows from trees somewhere off to the left, beyond the border of the paper. The curves may be gentle, but compared to the straight shadows earlier, the difference, I hope you'll agree, is quite considerable. Having established the tree and its shadow, and the snowy location, I'm going to inject a little warmth into the scene by applying a background wash of cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and a little French ultramarine. I'm applying those three colours wet on dry, but I'm working fast enough, hopefully, for them to bleed together in a smooth and relatively seamless way.
To make things even more visually interesting, I'm going to introduce some foreground puddles, created by the furrows of a buried farm track, perhaps. Always watch out for the accumulation of paint along the bottom edge of a wash, technically known as beading. A dry, hungry brush will help to soak it up, or as I've done here, use the corner of a piece of tissue. Puddles provide us with an opportunity to disperse colours that would normally only be limited to the upper half of a scene throughout the rest of the composition which essentially helps to prevent the creation of a top and bottom half split down the middle. It also provides us with a compositional device that helps to draw the eye into the painting. The natural progression from all of this is to introduce some further trees into the scene. That single tree is looking a bit lonesome and I could do with expanding upon the location a little. To do this, I'm recycling the colours from the warm wash to enhance and reinforce the glow from the sun. You'll notice that in painting in the background, I managed to smudge the foreground tree a little. I'm not too worried about that. I'll just repaint those details in later when I finish the tree off with its smaller details. In the meantime, I'm going to concentrate on those background trees. There's one more minor little trick I want to show you. 
I say trick, it isn't really. It's simply a way of drawing out the glow from the sun a little further. Also, it's a nod towards the fact that snow doesn't have much in the way of colour all by itself. Any colour that it does have is influenced by its surroundings. Here I'm adding a tiny amount of warm yellow mixed from cadmium yellow and cadmium red to those spaces between the shadows and softening them off to blend them in. It's a small, subtle thing, but it does help to reinforce the ambiance and prevents the snow from appearing too white or too bland. Once that's finished, all I'll need to do is add a few further, finer branches to the tree, and I'll be done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration of snowy shadows. I'm off to build a snowman. Until next time, take care. <laughs>